<laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> we're back on another week live with Dr. Chin. As today, we're going to discuss. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Procedures of the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun time. So last time you and I spoke, we talked about. Offline, you mean about your. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> Your bedroom issues. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, was that a different episode? I I, that, that was a personal okay. episode. <laughs> <laughs> Last time you and I spoke, we talked about abnormal pap smears. Yes, we did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so after an abnormal pap smear, things sometimes things need to happen, mm -hmm. which leads us to mm -hmm. talking about today. Today what we're talking about today, those yes. cervical procedures. Yes. So, I had an abnormal pap. What do I do now, Dr. Chin? I didn't see that lab result come through. I'm sorry, I had to see somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. I would okay. never see anybody else. So, um, what we normally do is something called colposcopy, and what that is is um, looking at the cervix in greater detail and then frequently getting a biopsy to confirm that that pap smear screening is consistent with what's going on. So that's why we need to do a biopsy. And frequently we need to use a machine called a coloposcope. Get out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you brought this in here. Yes. Okay. Well. So we have our little coloposcope. Oh, crap. We got to move things turn. around. Backwards. Ooh. It's a mirror. Mirror. You got to mirror it. Okay. Mirror it. Ah! <laughs> so this <laughs> is, this is <laughs> a coloposcope. That, um, granted, it is a little intimidating looking, but uh, basically what it is is just a glorified microscope on a stand. Um, it is attached to uh, this um, light device that we can see better. And also there's a little filter, a green film filter, that we, wow, I'm going to call you Vanna, <laughs> uh, that we, we use to see if there's any irregularities on the, the cervix. And, particularly looking at um, any vessels that might be um, grown by like potential cancer um, in order to keep growing. So this is the, the uh, 2019 colposcope by the Bovee company. Um, so they're, they're different types of colposcopes, but essentially they do the same thing. Um, and again, it's, it's really a microscope on the stand. Um, not too bad. Um, and, uh, we look at the cervix, we look for uh, different things on the cervix that might be going on. Frequently we put um, a very uh, mild dose of acetic acid or vinegar on the cervix. That might be a little bit tingly, but um, that's in order. smell a little bit like salad dressing. I think of more like... I think of Easter eggs. And exactly, pause Easter eggs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so anyway, we you were just, saying, yeah, we, uh, we, we put that on the cervix frequently to kind of get rid of any abnormal, um, discharge that might be covering up areas on the cervix and, um, it also kind of helps to, um, see different lesions on the cervix. So we are a little bit more suspect of getting a biopsy in that particular area. Um, we also use a, a different, um, uh, liquid called Lugol's, which kind of, what it does is it, um, it uptakes the this kind of mahogany colored fluid or, or solution um, on the cervix and um, normal tissue absorbs that and then abnormal tissue doesn't so uh, that's another thing that we we do to evaluate the cervix and uh, frequently we do do biopsies but again that's just to make sure that what we're seeing on the, the pap smear which is a, a screen um, is really correlating what's going on, and it's more of a definitive answer to uh, your abnormal pap smear. Do you always need a biopsy if you have to get a colposcopy? Mm, again, it varies. It varies, but frequently we, we do get a, a biopsy um, because although it looks fine on the on colposcope, um, we really need a, a, a better idea of what's going on and that's when the pathologists come in and they look at the specimen under a, a, a more powerful microscope so so we can put this one away yeah let's put it away alex can i get a vowel please <laughs> i'd like to buy an a different okay. show dude they don't come closer alex Beck is on jeopardy He's... oh wait what's his name from wheel of fortune 
Oh, um, Sajak, Pat Sajak. Pat. Yeah, Pat. Mm -hmm. Whoa, I'm getting dizzy. Join, sorry. Join us over here. <laughs> Come on in. How, but how much y'all love our new background here? Pretty great. Yeah. Okay. Great. Anyways, moving on. Um, so if I had an abnormal pap smear mm -hmm. and those cells were abnormal and you needed to do a colposcopy because what's going through my mind is, oh my gosh, I have cancer. Oh gosh, no, 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 no. So if I... I guess so, I so again, you know, we, we do the colposcopy A to make sure that there's no cancer there. And it's a frequently, if we can have a pretty good idea of what's going on, uh, again, most of the times it's not cancer, not cancer by any means. But sometimes when the, can, um, when the cancer screening and the, uh, in terms of the biopsy on the, the cervix, if it, if it gets a little bit concerning, then sometimes we do have to do another biopsy in order to get A, either a more definitive answer, or B, actually treat that abnormal uh, colposcopy result. So the colposcopy gets rid of any cancer I might have? No, it does not. It oh. is, again, it's just a, a better way of diagnosing what's going on. Um, the results of the biopsy shows um, it can be grouped in uh, what we call uh, CIN, which is cervical intraepithelial um, neoplasia, and it's <laughs> it's ranged worth, from worth that first. <laughs> and it's it's ranged from like a, a zero all the way to a three. Um, so zero is nothing. One is just a little. Bit and three is what we call severe, and that's more of a um, precancerous conditions. So uh, a CIN3 is where we would be a little bit more aggressive in uh, doing a cervical procedure in order to, um, again, diagnose and to treat um, an abnormal lesion. That's awesome. There are two other procedures that could be needed, mm -hmm. either you know, before or after a colposcopy, but typically mm -hmm. after so a colposcopy. So if we, if we get a, like a, um, a abnormal biopsy of a colposcopy. Hi, Debbie. I'm not Dr. Chin, but hi, oh, Debbie. Debbie. <laughs> Props to Liz. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. do look young, don't I? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, I know this. It's all the laser treatments I've been getting <laughs> on another episode. <laughs> Anyways. Procedures after a colposcopy. Yeah, so procedure after so, Okay, so anyway, uh, so there are two procedures um, that I do. Uh, the first one is called a, um, a LEAP, or a loop electrocervical excisional procedure. Uh... <laughs> so anyway. You're so prepared. Uh, well, I always. I try to be. You're always. Not always, but. So uh, that's a procedure that we do in, in the office. And uh, what we do is we use um, a loop, that's a nectropod. Um, and here's an example of a loop. Let me see if the background is. Is that a little bit better? Look at you being Ooh. all Ooh, 3D. video savvy. Ooh. So it's just basically, it's a tiny loop uh, that we hook up to electricity and um, basically get a, a larger biopsy of the the cervix and here's my little arts and crafts. A, yeah the little picture here um if you imagine this is oops this is a side view of the cervix here uh it's hard to backwards um basically what i do is i i use this guy this loop again and ooh, and basically um obtain a biopsy at the very tip of the cervix here it's a little bit better when it's not backwards um, and then you, these are examples of um, what the biopsy, a, a large version of what the biopsy would look like. <laughs> very <laughs> enlarged. So much, yeah, very enlarged. Times so 10. Very, very small. <laughs> um, so that's what the leap procedure is. Um, I What I do for that is I, I do numb the cervix, um, just kind of inject it to make sure that the um, patient is comfortable. You do um, this in the OR? No, we actually do this here in the office. Really? Yes, yes wow. we do. And we do so have. So you a, don't have to put me to sleep. No, we don't have to. Um, and uh, we also have nitrous, uh, nitrous oxide, 
um, and that does help quite a bit with any discomfort. Um, and also we have some other tricks that we can do to, to help people if they're a little bit too uncomfortable. But we do have um, some tricks up our sleeves. Yeah, we do. We, we certainly do. Um, and then uh, basically send off that to a pathology office and um, we can do it here in the office. Uh, we don't have to do it in the operating room. It's awesome. Yeah, so we can get the biopsy done um, so much quicker and a lot uh, less costly in the in the OR. Much more um, cost efficient. Right. Much less downtime. Yes, much less downtime. Yeah. Um, Could I go back to work afterwards if I wanted to? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would. I'd probably take a couple days off at least, just because um, it's normal to have some cramping up in the procedure, um, but. Um, really minimal downtime at all. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. What about the other procedure ah, that can be done? The other procedure is called a cold knife cone biopsy. Oh, cold knife cone biopsy. Oh, Debbie, I hope that answered your question. Um, what is the recovery time for something like that? Um, both of them. Two to four days, depending on how you're feeling. Yeah. Um, I mean, some people actually could go to work on the next day, but I'm a little bit more sensitive. I would probably need a little more time, but um, I don't know. It's just it's pretty just benign, depends. pretty minimal uh, procedure. Yeah. Um, but a similar procedure that I do is the cold knife cone biopsy, mm -hmm. and what it is is um, instead of using electricity, we essentially uh, use a scalpel. So it's Cold. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the way that we, we do the biopsy is we um, basically just kind of cut around the cervix and then make another incision towards the center of the cervix. So it comes out as a little cone. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's what it looks like. Um, and, um, and that procedure most frequently is done in the operating room. Um, the benefit of that procedure is that um, some people like to be completely asleep and not to feel anything, not to remember anything, which I totally get. Um, also for, for, for some people where it's a little bit scary, um, we need to get a really good pathology specimen. So because we use a, um, a knife and, and not electricity, mm -hmm. the margins of the, of the pathology specimen uh, will not be burned. So if the lesion goes up against the edge of the, of the specimen, we know that it is an abnorm abnormality, not maybe like uh, artifact from the cautery. Mm -hmm. um, so, so anyway, those are the two procedures that we do do routinely for um, colposcopies that we probably need some more information on, or maybe yeah. we need to treat it. And you answer. I was just going to ask, what's the difference between the leap and the cold knife oh. cone? But you pretty much answered that one for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, what would be the di like? What would be the deciding factor of doing one opposed to the other personal preference or it usually boils down to personal preference. Mm -hmm. Um, but some, sometimes I do recommend to, to some patients that a cold knife cone might be better just because the lesion might be a little bit more involved mm -hmm. and I may need a bigger specimen. Um, and sometimes you can have more, um, need to have more backup, you know, if, if the, if you need a big specimen, mm -hmm. um, so usually that's my deciding factor, but you know, again, everyone's different. Right. Um, is there ever a time when if I had concerning cervical changes after one of these procedures that it would lead to a potential hysterectomy? Um, so one thing that I, I do whenever I do these procedures is talk about complications and sometimes, um, you, you can get into some trouble. Um, that happens, thankfully, very rarely. Um, but if you get into potential um, bleeding that gets out of control, then yeah, sometimes you have to end up with a hysterectomy. Um, also, if uh, you don't get a really good biopsy specimen or you don't have a complete excision of what's going on, mm -hmm. um, this happens really, um, then you might have to have a hysterectomy so mm. this kind of varies dependent upon those biopsy results mm -hmm. usually we we don't 
do a hysterectomy, at least initially, right. assuming that's not frank cancer. I but, was going to say, what if the biopsy results show oh. something pretty unfortunate? Yeah. Again, I hate. I know you hate this answer, but it varies. It depends on the patient's Every history. Case is different. It is. It <laughs> is. So if I if I had an abnormal Pap smear and my colposcopy came back as CA and three, and my leap or my cold knife cone biopsy came back as some pretty invasive cancer. Okay. Let's uh, do like the wor worst worst case, worst case scenario. scenario. Okay, so worst case scenario. If it's a frank cancer, um, then usually what I do is I hand it off to the, um, the surgical cancer specialists, the gynecological oncologists. Um, they're basically gynecologists like me, but mm -hmm. they have um, more intense training for at least three, three more years, and they actually do uh, surgery uh, with known cancers. They do other surgeries, too, uh, for like endometriosis, where the surgery is very difficult because of all the other organs that are involved, but um, they're the, the folks who get involved, and um, if a hysterectomy is indicated, mm -hmm. um, then they'll go ahead and do the surgery, and I would prefer um, the the experts, the top experts in the field to do any, any cancer surgery, because um, they're going to have the best outcome. If, More of their specialty, outside mm -hmm. of just gynecology, right. not that you know right. what I mean? Yeah, though, because like, they can they can do amazing things. I mean, if you need the intestines out, they can do it. Do that too. Yeah, if if you need part of the bladder out, you know that that's the person you need to talk to. So depending um, on the yeah what cancer what's, what's going on yeah yeah but so if, super worst case scenario yeah and sometimes depending on how how far the the cancer is is um, has spread, sometimes a hysterectomy actually isn't indicated and it can make things worse. So the um, recommendation there mm -hmm. um, is actually to go to chemotherapy and radiation. So I was so, going to say just because you maybe get diagnosed with cervical cancer doesn't mean that you have to have a hysterectomy. Right. right. Um, well, that's pretty much all of the questions that we have regarding those procedures. Mm -hmm. I know there's just those three, so it's mm -hmm. not that we're leaving anything out. Is there anything that, Debbie, I hope that answered your question about between the leap and the cold knife cone biopsy. I saw that a little late. I apologize. And Kathy, thanks so much. We love doing these videos. Uh -huh. Woo! <laughs> Hopefully our background's gotten better and better. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you feel that we should share with anybody outside of get screened? I have a rash. <laughs> This is, these are those things oh, we okay. talk about yeah, offline. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We are next week going to be back with Morgan. Mm -hmm. Join us next week with Morgan Milagrosa, CNM, ARNP, or whatever the rest ABC, is. ABC, one, two, three. <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Join us next week with OG. Morgan. <laughs> We explain and find out what we mean when we say, I'm sorry, find out what the heck we mean when we say we offer medical cosmetic care for women. Yes. So if that intrigues anybody as much as it intrigues this one, join us next Friday at 12 with Morgan to go over all the fun stuff we can do in the office. It's exciting. And get screened. Get your annuals. Oh, oh, okay. Or for whatever. Okay. I, I thought you were talking about like STIs or something. I mean, if you're concerned, do that too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. And we will see you all. Hi, Queen. We love you. Hi, <laughs> <Hi>. representing. <laughs> Thanks, <Hi>. Oh. <laughs> okay, we out. <laughs> <laughs>